Hi, my name is Joseph, and welcome to part 11 of chapter 1, E.G. Wolf of the 9th Avenue. So this part picks up with E.G. asking Logomon for an explanation. And Logomon responds, an explanation to what? And E.G. states, to everything that's going on right now. He's confused as to why he's no longer in his loft. He's confused as to where he's currently located, uh, contextually, his setting. And he's also confused as to why Digimon are all of a sudden talking. And Logomon responds uh, by stating, E.G. Oh, excuse me, uh, his last name, E.G. Nagasumi. Didn't you listen to what Professor Rizu, uh Let me start over. I'm sorry. E.G. Nagasumi. Didn't you listen to what Rizuinji Rizu told you? And uh, E.G. is shocked that Logomon is not using the title of professor. So that's why I started over. I started over for two reasons because I mispronounced Rizuinji's name and also included the title of professor. Anywho, continuing with the summary. Um, so at this point, before we continue, I do believe there's a slight translation error. It states that E.G. Uh, needed to deactivate his Digimon linker strap in order to uh, utilize Mind Link. But obviously, I think it meant to say he needed to activate, not deactivate. So I just want to quickly state that right here. Uh, he had to deactivate the functions on his Digimon linker. Is actually supposed to state he had to activate the functions on his Digimon linker. And uh, after this, Logomon states that this is the Digimon uh, Mind Link explanation and uh unfortunately for you he responds with that's not enough of an explanation to just say this is the mind link <laughs> what you're experiencing is the mind link uh Eiji states that the professor tried explaining this to him or that portion to him but he didn't completely understand uh he quite literally states reason g explained it in a way that was difficult to understand and logomon's causal response actually makes eg a little bit nervous and at this point um excuse me i almost jumped ahead a little bit at this point Logomon starts walking and he points out that there's broken glass on the floor and EG he realizes that he only sees a reflection of what Logomon is pointing out and he starts realizing am I not here am I just seeing things through the uh, through the senses uh, of Logomon and at this point Chumon the one that was uh, uh, the one that Logomon saved from the previous part he saved him from the the rat Chumon fortunately or Chu Chumon I believe his name is Chumon is the rat Chu Chumon is the uh, the, the stuffed rat and then Damimon was the um, metal like Digimon that's in the shape of a um, well <laughs> of a poop <laughs> I was originally going to say in the shape of a turd but I was, I was trying to uh, sound professional but turd poop <laughs> I don't think we, one, we can I don't think one can really sound professional with either of those two words anywho but those were the Digimon from the previous chapter Logomon saved Chumon from Chu Chumon and Damimon and now uh, Chumon's reappearing and he states, I'm going to quote verbatim, um, oh, excuse me, I don't have the, uh, the excuse me, I won't say it verbatim, but essentially Chumon asks Logomon, where have you been? It's been a while since you've been uh, present. Uh, there's been rumors that a human uh, converted you into a Jijitama and a human took you away as well. And at this point, Logomon actually gets a little bit upset and he growls and he tells Chumon, do you really think that any human could, or he says assassin. Do you really think any assassin, I do think. Okay, excuse me, not that I wrote down the, the, uh, the quote exactly what Logomon says, but I'll just do it verbatim. Uh, essentially, not verbatim, excuse me, paraphrasing. Uh, Logomon essentially responds with, do you think an assassin could get the best of me? Or do you think that I could, uh, uh, um, someone could, could uh, let me start over. Do you think an assassin could get the best of me? Or that someone could put a collar around my neck? And then Chumon hastily says, oh, no, 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 excuse me. Uh, I did not mean to offend. And then at this point, Logomon takes a deep breath. And then he recalls, well, uh, excuse me. He tells him, oh, actually, I did have it written down. Who do you think you're talking to? Do you think that's an assassin or someone that put a collar on me? Um, excuse me. Logomon explains that he does like Chumon more than that stuffed rat, again, Chu Chumon. And um, he tells Chumon that he'll take care of him. Uh, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, I stated that Logomon took a deep breath, and then Logomon recalls uh, that this used to be, he recalls a dust kingdom with the Chumon being servants of the great Sakuomon, and Sakuomon was the ruler of the Fifth Avenue that Logomon caused a trash heap. Excuse me, pardon me for that slight jump ahead. And after this, Logomon, Chumon replies, yes, that's true. And Logomon then tells Chumon, I'm going to take care of you. You're essentially not under my protection. And then he licks him. <laughs> and then E.G. essentially, in parentheses, states, yuck. Because again, E.G.'s, uh, 
he, he's sharing those senses, uh, the five senses with Logoman. And so, of course, Eiji's able to taste that lick. And then, um, after this, Logoman whispers to Chuman and verbatim, you think I've been captured by a human before? And uh, Chuman just states that this that was just a rumor. And then after that, Logoman gives Chuman a piece of meat, real meat from the real world. And Chuman gets really excited, collects his data cheese from the previous part, that new meat, and then he takes off. Uh, he, he scurries off, he scurries away. Uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, it's stated that, uh, it's kind of implied that uh, Chuman hurries off and he hopes that he doesn't come into another encounter like this again. And, um, oh, excuse me, it's something I did forget to mention. When Chuman recognizes e uh, e Logoman, he calls him um, Demon Wolf at the Castle of the Nine Wolves. We discussed that little portion during the analytical part, but I just want to make sure that I mentioned that. So, excuse me. So, again, Chuman uh, takes off. He scurries away with his new food. And Logoman sighs and then tells E.G., so you were asking for an explanation. And at this point, Logoman actually jumps through a window. And it's E.G.'s first free fall. And then once Logoman gets into the alleyway, he starts running into a nearby building, a skyscraper. And with his claws, he starts running vertically up along the wall of the skyscraper. Then there's a small page break right here. And um, it's explained that E.G.'s uh, fueling... Logoman's five senses, uh, eyes, excuse me, my cat's walking in front of my notes, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Uh, the digital world, it's then right here explained that the digital world can't be seen directly by our human senses. It's a lot like a submarine and a space probe that utilize instruments and sonar and other uh, technology in order to, well, travel to where they need to get to. I'm just changing my page really quickly. Thank you for your patience. Um, at this point, essentially, so I'm not gonna lie, the wording of the of the of the part is a little bit wonky. I can't tell if this is Logomon uh, talking still or just a narrator, but it's explained that the question came up: um, Is it possible to experience the digital world through human senses? And because of this, that's why the mind leak started being worked on in order to transfer mental data to the DG core of a Digimon. And the Digi core is essentially the consciousness of a Digimon. It's the soul, the individuality of the Digimon. So essentially, what's occurring, the human mind is being converted into is being converted into data, and then transferred into the Digimon's Digi core or soul, and thus allowing them to essentially uh, uh, become one or unified. Um, this is again known as a mind link. It converts the human spirits into data and transfers the consciousness of the human to the Digi core. Um, E.G. recalls that this is what the professor also explained. So he's starting to make those connections between what Logoman is, uh, uh, um, between Logoman's explanation and what the professor uh, explained previously. Uh, uh, despite this new world that E.G. is partaking in, despite the fact that E.G. is not controlling himself, he really has no agency. It's all through Logoman's uh, actions. He's more uh, intrigued than bewildered, right? Typical EG getting excited, especially for the possibilities because this is, again, the mind link is what's supposed to be uh, that the top-notch code crackers are utilizing and EG is excited about this aspect that he's getting a first-hand look into what the top-notch code crackers are using and he will be using it too. Logoman explains that it's understandable that EG is a little bit uh, confused. It is his first mind, li mind link after all. It's natural to be confused. He'll get used to it as it continues. Sorry, everyone, I can't... Hey, I dislike it when I can't read my own writing. Oh, EG asks... Pardon me, I knocked something over. EG asks, when was his mental data converted... Or when was, when was his mental information converted into data, digital data? And Logoman responds with, well... Uh, it's been going on 24-7, your linker strap. Right? It's been analyzing your vitals and converting that information into digital data. Logomachin then explains that he's getting kind of annoyed with all the questions and his, all the noise in his digicore when essentially uh, EG's voice interacting with Logomon within his consciousness. And then again, at this point, EG has a second realization. He's already realized this when the professor explained to him that Digimon are alive. But I think for EG, it's finally hammering in that truly Digimon are not just alive, but sentient. And they're able to have their own individuality, their own personalities, and essentially um, be their own selves as he's encountering with Chumon, Chuchumon, Damimon, and Logomon. Um, and then at the end, Logomon is finally done climbing the, the, the skyscraper, and then he stands triumphantly 
at the top of the skyscraper. And as always, I just want to read it directly from uh, the page. Any other questions? I'm getting so annoyed by the noise in the Digicore. How can I talk to you? You're a Digimon. What a stupid question. It's because Digimon are alive. We always have been and always will be. Digimon are alive. Logomon, Teronomon, and all the rest of the Digimon. I see. So Digimon have been talking to me all along. You're just getting to know what Digimon a little better is all. After climbing up the skyscraper, Logomon finally stands triumphantly on the roof. The view from there is, and then the chapter ends. So as always, I'm trying to do my best to make the analysis go a little bit more smoother. I do know that the summary could be a bit smoother as well. So I do really do thank everyone for the patience. I do have the quotes up that I want to look at. And the very first quote is, uh, why isn't EG in his loft at home? EG Nagasami, didn't you listen to what Ruzinji told you? Huh? Ruzinji, EG is amused that the Logomon refers to him without, uh, refers to him with, excuse me. EG is amused that Logomon refers to the professor without referring to his title of professor. The mind leak explanation. So pardon me everyone, I'm not gonna lie, the translation for that sentence was a bit wonky, hence why I read it a little bit funny, but hopefully uh, it made sense. So why do I like this line so much? It's very minor, but it tells us a lot about Logomon. Despite Logomon barely making his appearance onto the, onto the page, uh, no longer just being a hollowized image of himself, we're finally, to, we're finally getting uh, uh, actual interactions with Logomon, and a lot is being shown about uh, Logomon as a character. So the fact that Logomon tells uh, E.G., weren't you listening? Essentially, the professor explained this. This tells us that Logomon, uh, first of all, has been hearing everything uh, since E.G. got the uh, Digimon linker strap. He's been hearing everything uh, beyond that as well. So if Logomon was conscious, whatever incidents, incidents, I'm sorry, whatever um, practices or events that he may have been a part of with the professor, more than likely he's aware or at least aware of to what information that he he's available to, right? Just because the professor is doing a project doesn't mean Logomon's aware of what he's doing with that project. He's just aware that he's doing a project, right? So that's what I meant by that. And also the second thing that this reviews about Logomon is that he's very, um, maybe astute's not the correct word I want to use, but he's very observant. Uh, he understands, even if he's not the direct subject of a conversation, he understands the importance of listening and incorporating that information within his own uh, whatever it is that he's doing directly, right? So that's why Logomon here is not confused because he knows that he's working with EG. I know it wasn't stated about their mission, the infiltrating of Sons of Chaos and discovering discovering what Tartarus is, but I'm sure Logomon's not surprised when they'll start talking about that subject matter, right? So again, that's why I wanted to point out this quote. It really says a lot about Logomon's character. Moving on, uh, in order, oh, excuse me, so this is just that typo. In order to infiltrate the Sons of Chaos, E.G. had to deactivate the function on his Digimon linker. Again, I'm pretty sure this meant to, this is meaning to say he had to activate the functions on his Digimon linker. Since I am here really quickly, I just want to uh, point out, I know I kind of have talked about the translations a little bit. I do want to say, even though the translation is wonky, I think the subject matter is understandable. Sometimes one does need to reread some portions, um, but it's not too drastic in my opinion. Uh, if one is interested in reading this for themselves, I highly do encourage you to give it a go. I know the translation might be a little bit off-putting, but again, the subject matter is there. It's just a matter of sometimes of making sense of it. Anyway, continuing to the actual, the next quote that I do want to focus on. This is when Chumon comes by. Master, I can't believe I missed you. Demon wolf of the castle of nine wolves. I'm nothing but a Chumon, a lowly rat Digimon. The Chumon that happened to be rescued greets Logomon. If you don't mind me asking, did you go somewhere? I haven't heard about the likes of you in a very long time. Rumor had it that you were changed into a Digitama by a human and captured by a human. The Chumon dares to probe a little. So I'm going to focus on two aspects of this quote. The first part being, of course, this is the second mention of the Demon Wolf of the Castle of Nine Wolves. So I totally forgot to mention this in the last video, so pardon me. Um, but there's really not much to discuss about this line. It's just really mentioning or highlighting that this line is being stated in the first place. Demon Wolf of the Castle of Nine Wolves. So right off the bat, this tells us at the very least that there's going to be eight other wolf-like or dog-like Digimon. Logomon is not the only one possibly at this, whatever this castle may be. This castle might be a literal castle or a symbolic castle. Hopefully we'll get more information as we continue forward. And the, the, the second part, the first half of this demon wolf, 
uh, the castle of nine wolves. I do recall one of my previous videos, I did explain that sometimes I do know in Japanese culture, sometimes demons uh, isn't necessarily a negative or toxic uh, idea. Sometimes there's uh, there's some demons that are willing to help individuals, just a little bit more neutral. I'm not sure if maybe this is what the word demon is referring to. Again, we don't have the direct translation. But with that being said, demon wolf, typically when we hear something like that, it's not something positive. Yet Logomon, this is what he's being described, uh, uh, described as a demon wolf. Not just a demon wolf, but a demon wolf of the castle, a nine wolf. So this tells us again, uh, is Logomon a much more a nuanced character that we give him credit for? The perfect example of not to judge a book by their cover, right? Logo monster, superficially, very cute looking dog. <laughs> um, how can a dog have any, uh, um, how can a dog have any um, negative goes or um, malicious goes, right? Uh, but I don't, I don't think Logomon is going to be an antagonist. I just think that maybe Logomon might be a little bit of an, maybe not an anti-hero, but a little bit more to Logomon that we're appearing to uh, uh, first uh, understand. I kind of like with the professor. I don't think the professor is going to be an antagonistical force, but I do believe he is on the quote-unquote good guy side, on the protagonist side. But we'll see how that goes along with the story. The second part I'm going to focus on with this quote is just, um, so I haven't heard about the likes of you in a very long time. Rumor had it that you were changed into a Digitama by a human and captured by a human. So again, this makes me, well, first of all, so Logomon's been absent from the digital world. What's the significance of that? Is his absence going to cause uh, um, actual change? And it's looking like it is. Uh, Logomon points out that the great Sakuomon used to be in charge of, what was it called? He used to be in charge of the, um, oh. Excuse me, everyone. The, uh, excuse me, I pardon, thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, Logomon explains that the Dust Kingdom was ruled by the great Sakuomon, ruler of the Fifth Avenue, and things are changing. Logomon actually does state that Iran, um, that things has changed when he was, when he, from, from what he recalls. So maybe Logomon is not just a civilian Digimon or a, uh, uh, what I mean by that is that it's obvious, or it's looking like it, that uh, Logomon might be part of a bigger system. What that system is, we don't really know. Uh, I'm sure we'll get more information as we continue on. Uh, but yep, the Logomon growls, Chew, so sorry. Do you think there's an assassin who could turn me into a ball or someone who could put a collar on me? Uh, please forgive me. The Chumon starts freaking out. The Logomon takes a deep breath and quickly raises its head. Yes, I remember now <laughs> the quote I just read. The Dust Kingdom... Excuse me, that was a hiccup. You two mon were servants of the great Sakuomon, ruler of the Fifth Avenue trash heap. Yes, I'll look, uh, yes, from the two mon. I'll look after you from now on. I like you a lot more than that stuffed animal from earlier. Logomon sniffs the two mon and licks it. So, two factors with this quote. The first one being uh, Logomon's impatience. He gets upset at being implied that Logomon would be captured. And that's really no way to respond, right? So again, that gives us an indicator to Logomon's character. I don't think Eiji would ever respond in this way, <laughs> getting um, irritated at someone and then giving an answer. I think Eiji might be confused, but he'll keep that to himself. But with Logomon, he's much more um, forceful with his opinions. He's much more willing to demonstrate his opinions uh, to the public uh, compared to other characters so far. Despite this though, uh, Logomon might be impatient, but it's looking like he's a Digimon who, who also knows how to self-reflect. Um, the Logomon takes a deep breath and quickly raises its head. That might be an indicator that Logomon recognized that he's being a little bit too aggressive. And so he needs to recollect himself and start engaging himself into an actual conversation. And then after this as well, I'll look after you from now on. I like you a lot more than the stuffed animal from earlier. The fact that Logomon is willing to take care of Chumon, what does this imply, right, to take care of him? This might indicate two factors that Logomon is both just a nice Digimon <laughs> and he's willing to help others when they need assistance, or maybe Logomon's aware that by assisting others, that helps to create a community where people are more willing to uh, assist the, 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 they're more willing to assist the individual who helped them in the first place, right? So, in other words, since Logomon uh, saved Chumon, he's helping to 
He's helping Chuman further than that, saving him from violence. Now he's giving him some food. Whenever Logoman might uh, require assistance, it'll be more likely that Chuman will help him, and more likely that Chuman will go to other Chuman and tell them, hey everyone, Logoman's back, he needs assistance. The last time I saw him, he assisted me, saved me, and gave me food. Uh, let's go help him out, right? So we don't really know why Logoman is doing this quite yet. Honestly, personally for me, I hope it's the former because <laughs> uh, he just wants to help and not the latter. But even if it is the latter, um, it's dependent on what the individual is trying to do with that community. And I don't think Logoman is going to try to attack the human world or try to impose his will. Um, but maybe I might be wrong about that again. We'll discover more about that because we mustn't forget he is a demon wolf, uh, part of the nine wolves of the nine castle, right? Or, or the wolf castle, excuse me. Um, so continuing forward. It's got a familiar ring to it, the Logmon whispers. Hey, Chumon, yes. You think I've been captured by a human before? It was only a rumor. With the old man gone, Ninth Avenue is in the doldrums and deserted. It appears Wassalam has changed a lot in my absence. Here, you can have this. The Logomon throws it some food. This is real world meat, as expected of a Digimon of your stature. You really eat well. Until next time. After gathering up the meat and cheese, the Chuma runs away as if never waiting to have this account, as if never wanting to have this encounter again. So the fact that Logomon whispers, to me this tells us that Logomon is again self-reflecting and he's realizing that there's some truth in what Chuman just explained. He was caught and it's possible that he was caught by a human, also possible that he was turned into a Dirichu Ego or, to a, or a Digitama. Um, so this is a factor that Logomon is willing to accept, but what he's going to do with this information we'll hopefully see in future parts. But then after this, after he gets confirmation um, that it was possible he was captured by a human, uh, Logomon doesn't get upset again the way that he did previously. I think the reason why he got mad was just because it was unexpected. I think Logomon might have a little bit of an ego. <laughs> and so if someone were to tell him, hey, you were caught unawares and you were taken away from here, right? I don't think someone with an ego is going to appreciate that, right? So that's why he gets a little bit upset. But then recollects himself and then he, he gets, uh, he recollects himself and then asks for clarification. And then rather than getting upset once again, because what's the point, right? It's not two months fault. And this is true, this rumor. Uh, essentially, Logoman is just uh, reconnaissance, getting information to understand the current situation. Because as he states, it appears Waslam has changed a lot in his absence. So things are not the same. So again, these couple quotes are just really great characterization for Logoman, making him, uh, he kind of reminds me of Satsuki, kind of impatient, wanting to get things done, but also recognizing that he needs to come down a little bit, slow things down, and engage with the current situation. The last thing I want to focus on from this quote, after gathering up meat and cheese, the Chuma runs away as if never wanting to have this encounter again. <laughs> that, that last part, I think this was just too much excitement for poor Chumon. He tried to steal food because obviously I think he was probably hungry. It seemed like maybe Chu Chumon and Damimon could share some of the wealth that they have, but they choose not to. Um, so the poor thing, I think when, as if never wanting to have this counter again, I don't think it's meant to say that he didn't like his conversation with Logomon. Um, it's just that maybe this was just too much excitement for Chumon. It's a very minor detail, but <laughs> I think it's quite comical. Funny thing to add. So this is after um, EG starts conversing with Logomon and the running up the skyscraper. He feels the wind on its skin. EG shares and feels the Logomon's eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin, all five senses. I see. So this is the result of Professor Rizinji's research. This is D4's forest most confidential technology. The digital world, which has a different structure from the real world, cannot be directly perceived by humans. For example, a submarine relies on instruments and sonar, and a space probe travels in outer space. We can only perceive what is going on around us indirectly through observed data. So pardon me, during the summary, I explained that the space probe was letting out sonar, and that was a mistake, excuse me, I got the information jumbled up in my mind. Obviously, I don't believe uh, probes are sending out sonar. For that line, a space probe travels in outer space, but that's being ex what's, that, uh, what's being expressed is the fact that most probes, when we send them out into deep space, um, we do have a specific go, but it's very usually a very broad go uh, because we understand that well, when we send out probes, it's to observe uh, what we haven't observed before. Um, so I think that's what that's referring to. And a space probe travels in outer space. Um, although we know where it's going, we won't know directly where it will be heading. We just know the, observ um, the information that it's observing. So the reason why I really liked 
Oh, the reason why I wanted to discuss this tonight is because it really reminds me of in the real life dark matter and dark energy. In case one is unaware about that, scientists do uh, perceive that there's some kind of force that's causing our universe to constantly expand. Uh, dark matter and dark energy. From my recall, I believe it's dark energy that's causing the expansion and we're able to detect, detect the dark matter. The dark matter is, uh, is what pu dark energy makes the expansion and dark matter is the space between the expansion or something like that part of me hope I'm probably didn't explain that correctly but we don't know we being humans we don't know exactly what dark matter and dark energy is but we know that it exists because it's observable because we're able to see that it's, uh, it has effects on the things around it so it's like just kind of reminded me of that a little bit bit of a tangent I know but um I just wanted to discuss it a little bit. I re really liking how they're, they're, they being the writers are trying to make it seem like the digital world is something that's organic and natural, but something also that's separate from the human world, but there's still connections between the two if we want there to be connections. I think that's a cool concept and uh, I'm just really enjoying it so far. So is it possible to somehow experience a digital world through the five human senses? After exploring this possibility, we transferred human mental data to the digicore of a digital life form, a Digimon, to create a consciousness. MindLink is a technology that converts the human spirit into digital data and transfers that human consciousness into the Digimon, digi, into the Digimon, digi, into the Digimon digicore realm. As it's as he speaks, Logomon runs up the skyscraper, not even taking a breath. As it does, the digicore is a data center at the core of a Digimon. It is the core of life. The error that shows that the Digimon is an individual, the ego, the soul of a Digimon, so to speak. So for this line, the reason why I wanted to highlight it is just for two reasons. The first one being because I think it's really important world building. Uh, we're getting more information about Digimon. Yes, we know that they're alive, but we're discovering that the reason that they're, they're more than just alive, they're also sentient. And the sentient is coming from the individualism and their individualism is due to their Digicore or their consciousness. Um, a Digicore is a data center or the core of at the core of a Digimon. It's the core of life. Uh, shows that the Digimon is an individual, the ego, the soul of a Digimon, so to speak. Right. So I really do like this because it's really emphasizing that our Digimon are really similar to animals in the real world. The biggest difference between uh, these two life forms is the fact that Digimon are again sentient. They're able to have um, individual individual characteristics that make Digimon well Digimon. And the second reason why I really like this line is this small detail. As, as he speaks, Logomon runs up the skyscraper, not even taking a breath as he does. So this implies that Logomon is not just an astute uh, Digimon. He listens to what's going on around him and takes in that information for his current situation. He's also a physically fit Digimon. He's able to run up vertically a building while also having a conversation with someone else, not just a simple conversation, but a conversation with an explanation. Do all of this without breaking a breath, essentially, breaking a breaking a sweat. Um, small minor details, but again, these small minor details really gives a lot to Logomon's characterization. He's barely appeared um, these past couple of parts, but I'm really loving the 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 way that Logomon's being portrayed. Uh, it's like I become a Digimon, Mind Link. This is the world that the best of the best are seeing. That's EG stating that. EG is immediately excited. It's your first mind link. It's only natural that there'll be some confusion. You get used to it soon enough. I already am getting used to it. But when, but when was my mental data converted into digital data? The Digimon linker has been sampling your biometric data, brain waves, and levels of consciousness 24 hours a day. So once again, further evidence for how Logomon is very astute. That last line, it could almost be as if the professor was explaining this to Iji. So it's really awesome. So what I love about this so far, I'm going to say Logomon is not like Agumon. He is more like Garumon and a little bit more like um, Gaumon as well. But we're not done. So let me look at the next quote and I'll explain what I mean by that. Um... So what I like about this line as well is that it really demonstrates Logomon's patience and his warm side as well. It's your first mind link. It's only natural. There'll be some confusion. You get used to it soon enough. And that's Logomon expressing empathy towards EG. And again, some of that more observational skills. He understands it's EG's first, um, uh, not subconscious, but first conscious separate from his tangible form, uh, deep dive into the digital world. And so he's not 
growling or snapping at EG the way that he did with Tumon, right? Despite that though, this next part, so <laughs> they are closely connected. Any other questions? I'm getting so annoyed with all the noise in the Digicore. Um, how can I talk to you? You're a Digimon. What a stupid question. It's because Digimon are alive. We always have been and always will be. To this line, any other questions? I'm getting so annoyed with all the noise in the Digicore. <laughs> Again, it's really seeming like Logomon. He is impatient, but he's doing his best to be understanding and to work in a team, kind of. Because why would one want to be impatient if it's not to work in a team, it's at the very least to work with others, with other individuals. Like someone who's work, who's used to working on their own, I would argue that, well, they'll be a lot more impatient. They wouldn't be willing to understand why there is confusion in the first place. But although we do see that Logomon does become impatient, again, he takes the time to bring himself back a little bit and be understanding. I'm really hoping that this is, these are not just translation issues, but these are actual characteristic details or characterization details for Logomon. And we're going to see how this, uh, how this will affect Logomon and EG's relationship. Um, especially the way that he is, Logomon responds to, what a stupid question. <laughs> like, he's already out of patience, right? How can I talk to you? You're a Digimon. Well, it's like asking, how can you talk to other people, right? <laughs> People are people. They're individuals. Well, Digimon are Digimon. They're also individuals. What a stupid question. It's because Digimon are alive. We always have been and always will be. Again, really emphasizing that sentence. I really do appreciate that. And again, I know it's really being hammered in quite often. It's stated again, Digimon are alive. That's stated twice <laughs> within the same paragraph practically. Uh, but what I like about it, Logomon, Terenomon, now the rest of the Digimon, I see. So Digimon have been talking to me all along. That's EG stating this. Although he's recognized that Digimon are alive, I think the first time when he heard this, he again considered Digimon to be alive more in terms of animals. Um, again, although animals are individuals, they can't really have a conversation with people, right? But now EG is starting to realize that Digimon are not just alive. And I know I've been saying this a lot as well, but I think it's to help clarify the difference. But they're sentient. They're able to have opinions, uh, conversations, personalities, they're able to be individuals. So this is EG's second epiphany. The first epiphany was the superficial understanding Digimon are alive. Cool. And now EG's realizing Digimon are individuals. They are alive. So hopefully that makes sense. I think that's why the Digimon Seekers, the work has really, really been repeating that phrase Digimon are alive. It's just to really emphasize that there's a difference between um, uh, animals and humans, Digimon are more akin to humans than they are to animals. Hopefully that makes sense. If, if one does require a further explanation, please don't hesitate to ask me. Um, I'm a big fan of the story so far, so the more that we're able to stay together, uh, the more I'm happy to uh, uh, cu cultivate that. Um, so that's essentially everything that I want to discuss with this part. If you guys are caught up already, please let me know what you think about this this chapter so far, about chapter one so far. Personally, for me, I know again that the translation could be a little bit wonky, but I think the story is doing such a great job with the world building, with the characterization. And although we're not really getting much about the plot, again, we do know that EG is trying to infiltrate the Sons of Chaos. We haven't even been introduced to the Sons of Chaos yet. We haven't even seen any members of the Sons of Chaos much yet, much yet Tartarus, much less Tartarus. Um, but yet despite this, um, all of this is just meant to give us context to what EG, to, to the world that EG, Logomon, and everyone else is living in and how they'll be operating within it. Um, so I know one might be a little bit impatient, but let me know if you're getting kind of fed up with this world building, this characterization, and you want to get forward with the plot already, or if you're like me and you are enjoying this, this setting up, because I do believe that they're going to do something with this story. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me on, on, on part 11. I'll see everyone next Sunday and uh, uh, for part 12 of chapter 1. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, if you want to make it to the don't forget to take your vital bracelet with you. Or if not, then just, uh, just do your own personal mind link and think about something that you really enjoy and put yourself into that shoe, into, into that individual's shoes, right? <laughs> Take care, everyone. Have a prodigious day. And thank you so much. I do appreciate you uh, listening and interacting with me.